This series is made possible by all of my patrons. More about that at the end of the video. Hello and welcome to another installment of Miro's OS Summer Camp, and I'm clearly not Nerd Forge. Is that the name of the channel? I think that's the name of the channel. Also, this is like very nasty because I actually use this, so there's like mud and stuff. It was essentially supposed to signify that today we will be talking about the potting mixes. This is a potting mix. If you, if you, you know, of course you do. It will be a significant potting mix discussion, so let's just dive in. That's not diving. I don't know, sports. Maybe I should have gone with just digging in or burying stuff. It's a different type of a discussion, isn't it? For those of you who follow the channel regularly, you will know that I already did a video about potting mixes and three main ingredients of the potting mix or something like that. I'm not, I don't really know my titles anymore, like it's been a long time ago, but I will link that video in the description so you can take a look at that. And I think that video is a bit more complex than this one, so I kind of decided not to redo it because it is a good video in my opinion, but I think for some people it has been confusing what I was trying to tell you in the video. And according to myself, and it's very lovely when you can quote yourself in situations like these, is that the three main important things when it comes to potting mix is that it is water retentive, well draining, and that there is enough of airiness in the potting mix. So we will talk about that, but I will give you specific recipes this time, don't worry. In many cases, we can make a lot of the potting mixes work for Hoyas, especially for the beginner Hoyas, the Hoyas that are most commonly found, but some Hoyas do have very specific requirements. Now, I will try not to go into those too much, but I will mention here and there, just like in my watering video, some of the specific Hoyas, and it's not gonna surprise you, it's pretty much the same Hoyas that are kind of picky when it comes to water, it's actually because they're picky when it comes to the potting mix. And I just wanted to put this out there, the best thing that you can do when you get a new Hoya is to research it. Conveniently, someone also has a video on how to research your Hoya, and I actually wrote down the title of this one, How to Grow Hoyas You Don't Know Much About, so I will link that video somewhere here in the corner or in the description of this video and I recommend that you give it a look. I am someone who definitely experimented a lot with potting mixes so I can tell you about a lot of them. Now there are some things that I did not experiment with and I'm just not gonna mention those because I don't like to talk about things that I don't try out for myself and usually those things are something that is not accessible to me so the tree fern fiber or whatever that is called vermiculite. It is accessible, but I just never tried it out. So if someone wants to say in the comments, I'm surprised you didn't talk about that. Well, it's most likely because I didn't try it out or because it's not accessible to me and I cannot try it out. But I have grown my Hoyas in organic mixes and those are the DIY mixes in DIY Pond and also in Lekka. So I can tell you what works and what doesn't work. And a lot of the things can work, but we have some Hoyas that are kind of specific. I think the best mix for your Hoyas should at least have two components. Unless we are talking about inorganic mixes, something like Lekka or something like Pumice, you can grow Hoyas just in those, and if you choose Lekka, that will be semi-hydro. I don't recommend growing in Lekka without semi-hydro, and if you choose Pumice, I would recommend for that to be something self-watering. All of my Hoyas until I think last year were in semi-hydro and they did well. And I grow currently one Hoya because, you know, Pumice be limited here in, in the sense that there is none and I have to import it. But I grow one Hoya purely in Pumice because I looked into it and I found out this is the best way to grow this Hoya, and that is Hoya medinillifolia. But in the rest of the cases, I do think two components are necessary. Even when we look at something like pond, there are three components there, usually sometimes more, and that is lava rock, pumice, and zeolite. And I would really strongly advise two components minimum, and then we will get into a discussion what those might be. When you get a new Hoya, what it arrived with can be a good indication of what that Hoya should grow in. That is unless it arrives in pure peat, in pure moss, 
then I do not recommend leaving your Hoya in any of those two. Pure peat just does not work for me. It does not work for a lot of people and peat is not something that is very sustainable. Even if you choose cocoa peat, I wouldn't just grow Hoya in pure cocoa peat either. I would add something else to that mix, but really peat can be very, very difficult to grow in. So I would just stay away from that. And moss, again, has its benefits and has its challenges. I would not use moss by itself, but I would use it in combination with some of the other ingredients. Moss can be a good thing to root your Hoya in, but from what I have seen on the internet, people do struggle with moss a lot. I personally have not had those struggles. Moss has been pretty easy for me and really a mix that I do like to root a lot of my plants in. Not a lot of Hoyas, but some Hoyas too, but a lot of aeroids, for example, I will root in moss. But this is not an aeroid series, so we're not gonna talk about them. We're just, they're just gonna show up in the video. Like, where is that leaf? Who is showing up? It's El Chaco. I also recently received Hoya in rock wool. <laughs> that was not a great experience because that Hoya ended up having root mealybugs. And for the life of me, I do not know why someone would root a Hoya in rock wool. It does not look like appropriate mix for me. I know that people do. I know that people do. But it's not something that I would ever do. And don't recommend it. 10 out of 10. Just no, no thank you. Say no to rock wool. When I say that a good potting mix should have two components, I mean that one component should be something that retains moisture and one component should be something that kind of provides airflow and drainage. In many cases, this is a mix that will be ideal for your Hoya. So you can have something like coco peat to hold on to moisture and then you can have something like perlite, for example, to provide drainage. A mix that I very frequently use for rooting my Hoyas is a half and half mix of coco peat and perlite. And this is just, in my opinion, a great mix to have on hand to just make one batch of this mix and then you can use it as a base for your other mixes as well not only for hoyas but also for aeroids it will be a good mix for rooting your plants in but also if you want to add something like bark to that you can do that and you can add maybe half of that mix which is coco pinta perlite and half of bark and that will just provide you with a very very airy mix for your hoyas a word of caution here from someone who has overused perlite in the past too much airiness and airflow is not always great. There are some Hoyas that are not going to appreciate that unless you stay on top of the watering and it's gonna be pretty difficult to stay on top of the watering. Hoyas like Loki, Multiflora, Chinkogensis, Angleriana, Vaccinioides, the common examples. Those are Hoyas that I really struggled with, but also Hoya Bella. And when I say really struggled with, I mean I really struggled with maintaining those Hoyas moist enough. And some of them are easier, some of them are more difficult. For example, my Hoya Chinkugensis is a swamp plant, 100%. It drinks water like no one else. I don't think I even drink that much water. And it's something that would really like to have a mix that has better water retention. The mix that I have here is something that new that I'm trying. And it is, again, something that is cocoa peat and perlite, half and half as a starting mix. And then I added, I would say, just as much bark and coconut chips to that mix. So 50% of this mix is half and half cocoa peat and perlite, and then the rest is half and half approximately uh, bark and cocoa chips. So I guess you could say 25% of each or one quarter. And this is a mix that is very, very airy, and I will just show it to you. You can see how that falls apart. A good test that I learned about when I started to grow Hoyas is how to check if your organic mix is airy enough and porous enough. And the way that you do this is you take the mix that you have or the mix that you made and try to clump it with your hands and then kind of throw it on the ground to see if it falls apart. And if it falls apart nicely, that means that it's airy and porous enough. Now, I have not been a big fan of coconut chips because Hoyas that arrive from Thailand sometimes will arrive with root mealybugs and it's just really difficult to get rid of the coconut chips. But I have let go in the past of this need to completely remove the organic mix, even though it will decompose over time. I just think that coconut chips can be useful, especially because bark be very expensive and times aren't that great, to be honest, to be spending on most premium bark. I would advise you to get good bark. Sometimes orchid mixes 
are not going to be that great. They're going to have peat in them. Unfortunately, I don't really have a brand to recommend. I used to use DCM brand of bark and it was like an orchid mix, but now they just, there's some dust in there and I don't like that. I hear that Orchiata bark is something that is very good, but that is not something that is accessible here. Now I want to read you a passage from a guy to who is of Borneo. It's not gonna be poetic, it's gonna be about potting mixes. This is something by Natalie Simonson, and she said, most Hoya species are lowland species and prefer tropical conditions with both warmth and higher humidity with dappled sunlight. However, those with succulent leaves can happily adapt to cooler or drier conditions as found in air-conditioned homes in the tropic or in heated homes in temperate countries or temperate climates. This is something that is true. You will see that Hoyas with more succulent leaves like Hoya finlaysoni, those are gonna be much easier to grow than Hoya medinillifolia. Now, Multiflora and Lucky, those are very resilient Hoyas, but they are definitely going to require a different mix than Hoya Finlaysoni. Under those conditions, the plants need to be watered more frequently to compensate the water loss through their leaves, which is made easier by using pots with water reservoirs. I'm telling you, self-watering pots are the thing. Which is made easier by using pots with water reservoirs, which have proven the most successful method in such dry conditions. And of course, using pots with reservoirs indoors, the potting medium must be porous. You're not just going to put potting mix in there, and I would just really advise you to don't buy potting mix. I don't like to buy potting mix, the regular potting mix that has peat in it. I avoid it. I have not used that in a very long time. I buy the ingredients myself. So I will buy cocoa peat, I will buy perlite, cocoa chips, bark, and I will mix my own mix. And I think that is really good for you to mix your own mix. It's a lot of mix in this <laughs> video. Now, Natalie does suggest that you can use part soil, and I guess it depends what kind of a soil you find. And she suggests one part soil, one part perlite, one part small acre or pumice. This is a good mix, and it's quite similar to what I suggested. Mine definitely has, I would say, more perlite and bark because I'm addicted to big things that are provide airiness? Oh gosh. Okay. Um, let's move on. Depending on your climate, depending on your conditions, the potting mixes will change. For example, in the tropics, Natalie suggests one to two parts perlite pumice, crushed volcanic rocks or crushed charcoal, and one part coconut coir. In the dry tropics, double the amount of cocoa coir or potting soil. I'm just gonna stop using the book at this point because I would like to discuss this a little bit more. I would extend this not just the climate and the environment, but also what kind of a lifestyle you have. If you do live in the tropics, but you don't have a lot of time for your plants, you might need to adjust this a little bit. Also, if you live in a climate which is similar to mine, which is basically, I think, most of the Europe, the summers are very hot, and right now, currently, the summer is not so dry, but in the winter, you have to put your plants inside. So you need a mix that works for both, that can be inside and outside. I personally don't take my plants outside anymore. It's just too complicated for me. It gets way too hot. I have to go crazy with the watering. In general, again, I would just suggest that you start with 50-50 cocoa peat and perlite mix for the most regular plants like Carnosa, Memoria, Linearis, Retusa, David Kumingi, Chinkugensis, all of those are gonna grow really well. Lacunosa in those mixes. Hoya undulata, we're coming to the more difficult ones would like to have a more airy mix. So I would add bark to that mix. In the past, I have used the mix with cocoa peat and perlite and with a lot of bark in it. I have also used bark and moss. Now look at that, bark and moss, something that holds on to the moisture, which is moss and bark. You can grow in 100% bark, but then you will most likely have to water daily. And good luck to you. Good luck to you if you want to do that. That mix I don't think would work in self-watering pots because you also need something that will wick the water and kind of transport it through the pot. So I would put even a bit of moss in there to kind of get the water through the pot. You can also use bark and pumice. Pumice is also something that is going to kind of transfer the water, but it's also big and it can provide airiness. You can use pure pumice. That is a good mix. I know people who grow in 100% pure pumice with great results. That is something that is good because inorganic mixes can be cooked, can be boiled, can be 
what's the word? Come on, brain. They can be sterilized and used over and over again, and organic mixes will break apart. And with the breaking apart process, when they break down, the pH in your pot will go down as well. So they will become more acidic. Something to keep in mind of. And this is one of the reasons why we repot, because the mix will become very acidic. But just to kind of finish off with this section, one thing that I would really avoid is pure moss, pure peat, and I would just avoid potting mixes that are from the store, unless they're very, very good quality mixes. If they have perlite in them, then I think they can work. Pond is also something that can be used to grow Hoyas in, in organic mixes in general. So you can grow them in pond, in ceramis, which a lot of people, when I say, don't know what it is. So ceramis is sort of a clay product, and I think it originated in Germany. To me, it looks like clay worm that has been cut up <laughs> into small pieces. And it works okay. I had my Hoya Serpents in it, but it's again something that's not available here, so I cannot use it, I cannot order it. I had one opportunity to try it out and I did, and I was happy with it. Maybe someone who lives in Germany, because I know there are people out there who watch my channel from Germany. Thank you, Analytics, and you know who you are. You can talk about your experience of using ceramis. You can also use LECA, and I used to grow my hoes in LECA. That is the self-watering method, so some sort of a reservoir will be needed. And it is a good way to grow Hoyas. I had really good results. And really the reason that I stopped growing in LECA, I did not like the reservoir in winter because the bottom part of the pot has to be submerged into water. And I just didn't like that. All of the potting mixes honestly will have some sort of a drawback. That is my experience. I've tried a lot of them and every time I find something to complain about. Maybe that's a me problem. Is it me? I think it's me. It might be me, it might be me. All jokes aside, I think it is important and it is useful to experiment with potting mixes to kind of get to know all of the components and to find out what works best for you. You might be satisfied with the first thing that you find and to be honest with you, there was nothing wrong with the mix that I used first, which was cocoa peat, perlite, it was a bit of leca in there and bark. Maybe I would not put leca, there's just something about putting leca in organic mix that I don't like personally. My issue with pawn is that what happens to me when I repot from pawn is that I will get root dieback with some of the hoes, and that is something that I don't prefer. So again, all of the potting mixes have some drawbacks. In general, I think hoes are plants that would not prefer to be repotted as often. I'm not someone that will keep their hoes in tiny pots forever. I see that some people do that. That is something that will require a lot of watering and I'm not here for it. I think a good size is to move them to 12 centimeter pots after they have rooted if it's Hoya with slightly larger leaves. And that is something that I do now and they do grow quite well like this. All in all, I think the most important thing is to find a balance, to find something that works with you, not just with your environment, but also with your schedule, with your lifestyle. You might find a mix that works for your environment, like growing in bark and moss, with majority of that mix being bark, but you just cannot get around to watering that much because that is a high maintenance mix, I would say. So in that case, I would add something like cocoa peat and perlite to just kind of hold the moisture there. You know, watering once a week is my maximum. And of course, to kind of just touch base on the environment in your home, if you have a very dry home, if your humidity is 20%, 30%, don't go crazy in the bark. You're not gonna do yourself a favor. Don't go crazy in the perlite. Even I have issues with perlite and the humidity here is always like 50% at least. Even when I turn on the air conditioning, it's 50% and I use sometimes way too much perlite than I should, we all know. Don't make problems for yourself if at all possible. You know, don't go crazy on those. Kind of test your environment, check on the humidity meter thingy, what is your humidity? And if it's very, very low in humidity, you're not gonna have an issue if you put a bit more cocoa peat in there, if you put something that's more water retentive. Of course, I don't know your environment and I have never grown my Hoyas, I believe, in something that's 20 or 30% of humidity, but I would just try 60 or 70% cocoa peat and then maybe 30% bark or perlite or something to kind of break that up. Unfortunately, a lot of the plant stuff is trial and error, so this is not supposed to just give you the full recipe. 
I did some suggestions there, but again, I'm someone who has never grown in a dry home and someone who grows in Florida in a greenhouse cannot really give advice to me, even though that person may be a seasoned grower, they cannot help me. Same way, I cannot maybe help you if your home is 20% of humidity because I've never tried it. I can tell you what I think might work, but a lot of this is in trial and error and that's fine. No one should be heartbroken if they lose a couple of plants, you know, that's why we start with the cheap ones, with the easy ones, and then we kind of increase the difficulty. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you find this episode also useful. And I would really like if there is someone out there who grows in 20 and 30% humidity to leave a comment down below what type of a mix do you use? Do you use a self-watering pot or not? Or maybe you have bought a cabinet, something like that. I am definitely not for keeping all the Hoyas and Tents in cabinets. I think, you know, it's very nice to have someone that is hanging something, a Hoya. That sounds, why, why is it all weird sounding today? It's nice to have plants in the window. And I think in the future, I will find a way to kind of bring that video to you. Hoyas that would do really well, even in drier conditions. You know, I think we can find some species that can adjust well to that. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Tell me what makes you grow your Hoyas in, what you like and what you don't like. I expect there will be a lot of moss hate and that's perfectly fine. Turn on the notification bell if you would like to know more about Hoya Summer Camp and how to grow your Hoyas and, you know, maybe share these videos with someone who is just beginning with Hoyas. And I will see you very soon in the next video. And until then, stay off the perlite. But some perlite is fine. It's fine, like 50% of perlite is fine. Who makes perlite? Those, those people should sponsor me. Bye. I would like to thank all of my patrons who make content like this possible. A big shout out to my $5 patrons, my three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy Catherine Molina, Danuk Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, Houseman Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Yovan Denot, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Kristen Sherwood, Laplan de Steff, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina, Alif for Day, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Saloma Dahl, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Youth of the Walamuth, Zardrama, and Zlokov Nipponi. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons Angelina Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brianna Phillips, Kilong, Claudia L, Aaron Keenan, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Plantolenia Ringlov, and Tang Watanas Cool. And thank you to my $1 patrons, Kari, Christina Greengrass, Constance Couture Helvatica, Edith W, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lori Ann Supermanium, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chin Mueller.